Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is September 4th, Tuesday, 2018. Hope everybody had a great Labor Day weekend. Um, I wanted to start off the show. Actually, let's go ahead and, and get the space weather stuff out of the way, and then we'll go back to the update on Tropical Storm Gordon. Uh, solar wind speeds tonight are sitting at a 474.4 kilometers per second with a density of 1.2. Take a look at our sun. Guess what? We are spotless once again. This is now six days in a row. My, how quickly they pile up. And we are looking at 137 days now without sunspots for 2018. Had a healthy conversation about that the other day. And um, it's, it's possible we could see around 220 or more spotless days for 2018. So it wouldn't be surprising. Looking at our KP indices, we're at a three right now, and the 24-hour max was also at a three. Take a look at our SDO. Let's look at it in motion like we always do, and we will see some coronal hole action that is due to affect us on September 7th um, as we are looking at it um, right here dead center. That's the region that we will be anticipating increased solar wind speeds, uh, possibly somewhere in the 500 kilometers to 600 kilometers per second range. Uh, right now, there is no geomagnetic storm warning or watches. And also, we are all clear on the sunspot side for now. So nothing appears to be happening on the eastern limb as well. So we're back to that quiet sun once again, and we'll see if we have any more action for the month of September. If we don't, that was a very short-lived um, period of activity. If you guys compare it to last year's, around the end of August into uh, early September, we were quite active with solar flares and sunspots. However, we have the dual sunspot, and then since then, it's kind of just leveled off. Take a look at our TSI reading for August 27th. 2018 and we were at a 1360.745 interesting enough that I did see a dip in the TSI on around the 26th but it wasn't quite um, it wasn't quite the decline that I thought it was going to be um, it only got down to 1360.591 granted we haven't seen anything below the 1360.6 uh, value in a while but not quite the TSI dip that I was expecting or looking for. So it makes me only ponder if this year's activity is just proven to be weaker than last year's. And the, and the proof is right here in the numbers. And so here we go with Tropical Storm um, Gordon. I was going to read from this a little bit, but uh, just watching from what I've been seeing online here for the past uh, couple hours, couple things I want to talk about. First, let's go ahead and go to SpaghettiModels.com. Mike's weather page, he does an excellent job. Please visit his donate button for a little tip for him. Is, uh, this is his peak season. And so far, so good for him. He's done very good reporting. Let's deal with Gordon. Is still a tropical storm. A very strong tropical storm. Uh, central pressure is now at 999 millibars with winds uh, maxing out at 70 miles, or I'm sorry, yeah, maximum sustained winds at 70 miles per hour. Um, so far, from what the reports that we have seen, we are looking at sometime tonight into the early hours of Wednesday to make landfall for Gordon. The biggest threat right now appears to be in the Mobile, Alabama vicinity. And we will zoom in on that. This region here is expecting the most of the water. And here's why. This is where we're seeing the flood warnings. As you can tell, we have uh, multiple uh, bands of heavy rain in that vicinity of Mobile, which is right next to... Um, Mississippi, if you guys can see, I don't have a pointer right now. I apologize, but uh, maybe I could do this. Maybe if I move, yeah, here, I'll move the live logo. Right in here where the L is, is where Mobile is. That's where we're going to look for the most rain to fall from this storm thus far. 
Um, as it appear, as it continues to make landfall, this storm will weaken. And what we are looking for in that area right now is up to five feet of storm surge. Um, it is possible for localized areas to see five to eight inches of rain. Although I will say that this right here has been updated on the weather channel and they are not expecting this region right here again where the live symbol is in the orange that's that area has actually declined in size for um, their expectations for um, five to eight inches of rain in fact go to the very top of this graph here that little dot uh, place that near a mobile and that's more like what they're uh, updating the forecast so uh, some signs that the storm is weakening already as it approaches landfall. But we sure have heard a lot about this storm. And, you know, watching the Weather Channel all day, I get it. This is probably a good warm-up for them as they think that we are getting ready to see some um, action here from hurricane season. But I also want to show you guys the spaghetti models for where this storm is going after it's done here in the Gulf. Um, right here, a lot of it's going to make a turn into Missouri, into Illinois, and go northeast through Ohio. There are some models that are taking it right through central Ohio, through southwest and central Ohio, through PA. Um, but that's just one model. Most of this is going to be wind up, the remaining of this moisture from this storm is going to wind up in Canada, uh, north of it. But, you know, nothing like hurricane force winds. Uh, when this storm does make uh, landfall. So I just wanted to update on Gordon real quick. I know there's a lot of reports out there and uh, they've been getting ready for the storm. By any means, am I downplaying the flood uh, possibilities? Uh, by any means, am I downplaying that? Because we still have storm surge to look out for. We still are going to get th uh, one to three inches of rainfall some areas can receive five to eight um, but the good news is is that this storm was short-lived over the warm waters of the gulf and it wasn't enough time for it to strengthen to a hurricane uh, status at all not even a cat one so that's some good news uh, the other good news i think is that some of the forecast for how much heavy rain we're going to see in mobile alabama has also shrunk so there's a couple things that's playing out for us as far as this particular storm is uh, of, of concern for us but I quickly want to kind of take a look at Florence real quick well as well also I want to take a look at the GFS uh, forecast for Florence as well um, a lot of hype out here guys a couple things to talk about first uh, I'm I'm just trying to point out the obvious and, and and someone wants to correct me that's fine I'm not an expert as far as hurricanes go but here we have a couple of tropical waves coming off of Africa in the center is Florence all right that is for sure a storm right now and then we have these two impressive waves that are coming off of Africa one that kind of looks real impressive and then fizzles out right before it makes landfall or ocean waves now the reason why I'm showing you this is also I want to show the G GFS but I also want to show the uh, the anomaly change in the in that particular region of the ocean and let's take a look quickly at all the anomaly maps here. This is the analysis 12Z, September 4th. Right here where my live box is, folks. I'll move that again. This is the area I want you to take a look at. Now, we do have some pretty decent-sized waves coming off of Africa. But notice in all these anomaly temperatures, this one is for the seven-day change. Okay, notice all the dark blues that we're getting. And then this is the temperature anomaly difference from global mean, the CDAS sea surface temperature in the 12Z. And that also is, wait, that's the one I already showed you. I do apologize, folks. All right, so the point I'm trying to make is, is that we've got colder water right where these waves are coming off now what i will say is that right here is very warm waters 
So what Florence going to do? Florence is going to take on a track that's going to show that it will intensify once it gets to those warmer mid-Atlantic waters. And I'll show you real quick. And you're going to see it here. I don't have to really show you. You're going to see it once it enters into the mid-Atlantic. Boom. This thing gets big and impressive. So we're looking at 931 millibars. And if you looked at it zoomed out like this, this storm looks like it's going to come close to the East Coast. Also, this particular region will support this strength in this storm. But what happens here is that we have high pressure coming back into the middle Atlantic, which will dominate and will help rotate this low pressure system up and out towards Europe. Watch these two low pressure systems down here at the bottom as well. I'll just move it frame by frame. The high pressure takes hold, pushes the Florence away from the coast of the United States. And then as it's moving towards the middle of the sea, the systems combine and ride out the coattails of this high pressure system, taking three of those systems out to sea with it. So... I guess I'm the wet rag of the fear report industry right now because what I'm trying to show you is we have correlating temperatures here in Africa that's colder that are not really that great for hurricane weather for tropical waves to continue to develop not the best of conditions not saying it's not possible but not the best of conditions and then in this time of the year we have the old high pressure system to think for doing its job here in the Atlantic and churning everything out like a conveyor belt. I'll show you one more time. Here's Florence and those two waves that I was talking about off of off of Africa. Wave two, wave one. Florence makes a very close approach. But like I said, as that high pressure system makes its grab here in the Atlantic, and plus we have a little help up north of help churning this out as well, it takes the other two waves with it. And almost, folks, if you look down here in Africa, that this low pressure right here, it almost appears that it is also being sucked up with that system as well. So, yes, we have some activity off of Africa right now. Yes, we have something to deal with in the Gulf. But with the way the temperatures have been this year in the Atlantic, the tropical Atlantic, which, by the way, I will show you. Um, you know, this map right here, right th at this time, it looks very busy. Looks like there's a lot going on, but like I said, once that high pressure system takes place and grabs a hold of everything that's in the Atlantic, it kind of pulls it with it and takes it away. Three systems at once. So the East Coast is spared for now, unless something drastic happens with these pressure systems and that high pressure system doesn't latch on and pull these guys out because that's what this thing is doing. So, and that's going to have to be some drastic changes for these storms to become a threat to anywhere at this point right now the way the gfs models are looking th there is little to be worried about at this time now that doesn't mean that noah's not going to put out notices of potential development um, they give this first wave that i was showing you here or actually the second wave behind it a 20 percent chance to form within the next five days this one right here it looks like a pretty good chance of being a hurricane within the next five days but look at the track for this one as well similar to Florence how about I move this up so you guys can all see it so we're seeing these two storms right here from what the GFS is showing us right now more than likely that these storms will Florence will approach the eastern seaboard but it won't come close enough to affect us. Maybe some waves, maybe some uh, currents, but nothing uh, wind driven. We might see some gusts in the 20 miles per hour. But at this point right now, this big storm Florence will flush out uh, of the Atlantic uh, once high pressure settles in here later in the next seven to 10 days and pull these storms out of the Atlantic and virtually erase any hurricane activity. And this is what I'm talking about right here. This is on the 13th of September. Here we are on the 16th. These storms start to run out of the Atlantic. And just like that, 
on the 20th of September. We got this bad boy right here making its way to the northern part of the Atlantic, which we know how cold the waters are up here. So that'll immediately turn into just another rainmaker. But look, nothing really projected here in the region that we are used to seeing storms lining up one after another, making their way towards the Gulf or the East Coast. And it's a, a lot has to do with this, what I'm showing you here, these temperature anomalies. The temperatures, other conditions as well. Um, I haven't talked about the Saharan Desert thing in a while, but that has something to do with uh, how much that dust will absorb the moisture. So it just drives me crazy sometimes to watch some of these so-called um, so um, weather channels out there that make a big deal about some waves that are coming off of Africa, but don't pay any attention to some of the other factors that go into tracking these storms. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not saying I'm all knowing here. And this is a meteorologist Jake here, but just learning from what I've seen here, what I've had to report on in, in previous patterns. It just, to me, I, before I would make any kind of sensationalist claims, I would at least look at this data first. And there's nothing here that would make me think that. Look at this. Here's the El Nino index, by the way. Um, we're under 0.1 again. We need to be at 0.25 for El Nino. Uh, once again, we're below that mark and then some. Temperatures today in the ocean, some spots rose a little, some spots dropped a little. Uh, here in the East Tropical Atlantic, it dropped quite a bit, in my opinion, from above 0.3 all the way to negative 0.388, almost down to 4 to 5. Very subtle changes in the temperatures, but still, declining same here in the nino 3 4 index so that's my take right now on the hurricane situation florence is going to be an impressive storm that will make a close approach but should and i mean should as long as everything happens the way it's forecasted should be pulled off into the north atlantic along with the other two systems that are following in its path that also will be caught up into that high pressure system and pulled out as well. And like I said, it's like this high pressure system is just, you know, pulling out the fish and there's nothing else in the sea. Um, as of right now, that, that could change tomorrow. We've seen waves continuously develop here in the last four days. It is that peak season. This is why, because we are seeing more development off of Africa. But from what I'm seeing so far, uh, the ocean is not allowing these storms to survive. This Gordon storm, uh, I don't blame on it, the Atlantic Ocean whatsoever. That was more of the Gulf region, tropical area here in Central America and beyond. The waters there in the Gulf are definitely warm enough to support any kind of activity. So, um, But that has nothing to do with the moisture or anything like that coming off the coast of Africa. And as this map here clearly shows you total precipitable water, um, it's very obvious that the Gulf is rich right now when it comes to the ingredients for supporting a tropical storm but if you look for the rest of the area in the atlantic i mean it's heating up a little bit but it also appears to be cooling as it heads towards the gulf so still early in the season it's only the fourth of september i mean anything can happen but right now uh with a quiet sun no sunspots no sun activity uh cooler ocean temperatures and the factor is that, um, like I said, the high pressure still dominating the mid-Atlantic. Right now, I still, I'm going to go ahead and stay. It's, it's going to stay on the quiet side. We got a little action here with Gordon. But uh, I will be surprised if we're talking about a hurricane uh, making landfall anywhere near the United States before the end of the month. Um, unless something pops up in the Gulf region. That's the only place I expect uh, any kind of a hurricane is if something happens to develop in the Gulf region. And other than that, I just don't think the conditions are favorable in any other region out there. All right. So that's enough on the update there. Uh, we'll talk about some flooding. Several uh, areas in Wisconsin, Wisconsin districts got a reprieve from the start of school on Tuesday because of the state's historic flooding. Because of concerns for school buses negotiating flooded and closed roads, officials in Prairie du Chien, Maston, Montello, Reedsburg, Elroy, Richard Center, and Hillsborough either canceled classes on Tuesday or delayed them for several hours. And it goes on to talk about how some of them are just going ahead and canceling school for the week. 
Um, Marquette County, they gotten over 16 inches of rain last week, so they're still cleaning up from the floods uh, that's happened. Taking a look at the map here, uh, excessive rainfall outlook, a lot of these areas are receiving almost double what they get in a month. Um, last month, the second wettest August on record, Madison, where a total of 10.4 inches of rain was recorded at the airport, second to only 15.18 inches that fell in 2007. The normal or August rainfall is 4.27 inches. Locally, rainfall amounts were much higher with unofficial reports as much as 14 inches west of Madison on one day. So 2007 was a record rain event with 15.18. We almost saw that and then some just here recently. Milwaukee August rainfall recorded at Mitchell International Port was 5.68 inches. The normal is around 3.97. Reedsburg Police Department reported on social media Tuesday significant flooding was happening again, possible because of the 7 to 8 inches of rain that fell Monday in La Valley. Highway 33 between La Valley and Reedsburg is closed, as is Highway 58 from La Valley. And if we look at Windy right now, our current radar, uh, Madison, that area we were talking about, Monticello is right in this area. So they're receiving a break at this time. But I did look at their daily forecast, and they are expected to get rain tomorrow. However, it will be light, so nothing significant at this moment. But we do see northern parts of Wisconsin getting drenched tonight. Even after the sun is going down, the main energy of the day is over with. So these storms should start to um, decrease in intensity. But right now, they're still showing some heavy returns. Speaking of heavy rain... The typhoon Jabai slammed into western Japan on September 4th today, killing at least nine people and injuring more than 300. This is the fourth typhoon to strike Japan this year, and they were all within the last five weeks. And the first categorized as very strong to make landfall in the mainland in the last 24, 25 years. Now, that was in 1993. Typhoon Nancy was the uh, storm they were speaking about. But this one here made landfall in southern parts of Tokushima um, around 300 UTC on September 4th with sustained winds over 100 miles per hour, making it the strongest typhoon to hit mainland Japan since Typhoon Nancy in 1993. The typhoon left a trail of destruction, killed at least nine people, and injured more than 300 as of 1800 UTC. 1.61 million customers in uh, Fukui, Shiga, Koto, Asuka, Haigo, Nara, and Wakayama prefectures were left without power. In addition to 95,000 in the Shikyu region, the Japan Times report, Asuka reported wind gusts of over 125 miles an hour, the strongest to hit the city since 1961. And I know there was something else that I had seen earlier tonight that was talking about 1961. But just an impressive storm. I'll leave you the link here in the description. You guys can take a look at the videos here lately. We haven't been able to play many YouTube videos from this channel, I think, due to copyright issues. I do apologize for that. Let's take me a quick drink here real fast, folks. Sorry about that. Okay, so back to the show. Um, interesting article. This is more or less an opinion. But I read it, and it, it's kind of a summary of what's going on right now. And I feel like uh, this is an article that we, uh, we should all take a look at. And I'll read just a few parts of this. Um, Trump degenerate syndrome is fairly popular. Even people in far eastern countries like India and Australia know about it. But little do we hear about climate change derangement syndrome and another new syndrome emerging from it. CCDS, for short, is a behavioral pattern in which a section of our society responds irrationally to any trend in global temperatures that contradicts its narrative of a dangerous rise in global temperatures without regard to the actual data. Now, for example, recently a group of scientists, 60, uh, 60 scientists to be exact, journalists, politicians, activists, and others signed an open letter saying they won't debate anymore or anyone who denies that climate change is human-induced or that is dangerous needs to be prevented. Even if prevented, it costs trillions of dollars 
otherwise available to solve other problems. In the past 20 years, those with the CCDS have used all means to attack those who do not share their views on climate change. Rather than accurately representing what skeptics think and present evidence to the contrary, sufferers of CCDS uh, caricature skeptics as denying any human contribution to warming or even denying any warming at all. Those who are new to the climate controversy might be surprised to learn that almost 100% of climate skeptics with an academia knowledge the current warming trend in our world. Now they go on to talk about the uh, Little Ice Age, how it was cold in the 16th and 17th uh, periods, centuries, uh, carbon dioxide, how they were talking about how we warm back up, but this was before carbon dioxide content could make any significant contribution contribution to temperature due to we were not quite into the industrial swing yet. The warming that begun during the phase continues to date. Scientists call the current phase of the modern warm period, so all the academics agree on the current warming uh, phase. However, by repeated attacks on skeptics through a complicit mainstream media, those with CCDS have led much of the public to believe skeptics deny all warming or at least all human contribution to it. Uh, the overall point here that talks about how, um, in reality, most skeptics with both within academia and outside of it, remembering that undeniable evidence about the existence of similar warm periods in recent climate history, question whether or not the world is warming or even whether human activity contributes to the warming, but how much and what relation to natural causes and whether proposed changes in global energy policies are worth the effort. All this article is saying is that it, we are basing these decisions off of data that we have in front of us. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. CO2 from the Paris Accord Treaty still rose this year, and the majority of the countries met their targets, some of them anyway. Okay, so we are thriving right now in a, in a CO2 of 411 parts per million. And this article right here really puts things into focus. And it was kind of what I was talking to a friend about before I did the show tonight. A buddy of mine from Ohio, Brian, we like to talk about various things. But when we talk about climate, I consider Brian to be one of those guys that just kind of, you know, it's the consensus. And I'm he goes off of what he hears, which is totally normal. A lot of people do that. A lot of people don't have time to sit and read articles and do research on certain subjects. So they rely on certain news outlets to give them their information. Totally normal. A lot of people do it. And it was interesting to hear him talk because he was regurgitating a lot of the things that are taught in mainstream or consensus believed. Just like how we pointed out in one article a couple days ago, how um, the gentleman who made a, a climate comment about hothouse, this, how the earth is going to be a hothouse, um, well, also didn't have any evidence to back that up, but just said he was quoting uh, the consensus views. So these people that are puppets for that are just regurgitating information. And unfortunately, folks like Brian, who just work a lot of hours and they don't have that kind of time on their hands to go through and do this research, Unfortunately, they take bits of what they hear on a normal basis and a constant basis and make their own conclusions. Now, Brian and I don't agree on everything when it comes to the climate, but I think he is also willing to listen to what I'm saying and what we're saying over here because of the way I'm presenting the information to him. I'm not yelling at him. I'm not calling him names. I'm not laughing at him. I'm not insulting him. He's. I'm simply just telling him exactly what everything is means when he explains to me that co2 is trapping heat i explained him how it's not and he was more willing to back off of that claim that co2 is after we were done talking i think the the overall agreement was that there has to be some kind of impact of what we do to our atmosphere that impacts us in some way in the climate whether not global climate but just localized and there is some truth to that there, what we put in the atmosphere, what we do to our environment is very important. I'm not saying I want to be irresponsible 
and not take care of the planet and not try to plant trees and all that good stuff to save our planet. I'm not saying I don't want to do that. I just don't agree with the taxation of carbon and how it's being brainwashed into folks that it's warming our planet. Because here we're showing you that CO2 is high right now at 411 parts per million. We're showing you the sea ice extent of Antarctica, which looks pretty normal to me. Some areas have some growth, some areas have some loss. But if you take a look over here in this section, I'll move my live uh, pointer. Look at that. Look how much extra ice we have on this side. That doesn't make up for the amount that we've lost in other parts. It doesn't even things out, but it sure makes it impressive on this side. It Maybe it does. Maybe it makes it even all over. But there's growth down there. Don't listen to that mainstream media. It's telling you that Antarctica is losing billions and billions and billions of tons of ice. What they're forgetting to mention to you about those billions and billions of tons is that that's only 0.011% of the ice in Antarctica. That's how much ice is down there. So don't believe the hype, as the famous Flavor Flav once said. But going back into the whole topic about CO2 and, and, and heat, I mean, look right here. We are sitting at a plus one nine right now, 0.19 degrees Celsius above baseline in August. This time last year, we were sitting somewhere in the 40s, the 0.4 range. But yet, mainstream media and other platforms want to tell you that we're warming right now. They'll say, well, look at, look at since 19, look at the increase. Of, no, I get that. I see that. We're recognizing that warming period. That period's over. And I've said that since we've started this channel. We're not recognizing that it hasn't warmed, but we're saying in 2016, that was it. The warming phase was over. And I know there's others out there who will say, oh, it was 2014 or it was 2008. Uh, okay, sure. Possible then too. But really, the peak that we got in 16 signified the end of the warming in this period and now we are cooling and according to the data that we've looked at from last year and what we're looking at this year it sure correlates a lot of things that's been said last year was said that this year would be worse than last year i believe that's true last year we didn't have all the floods we had floods we had natural disasters with the hurricanes but hurric or tropical storm gordon right now is to me the equivalent of some of these thunderstorms that's dropping eight, nine, ten inches of rain in one day. Minus the wind. Obviously, the tropical storm winds are a little bit more intense than a, that of a thunderstorm. But, you know, if you don't live on the coast, if you don't live near the coast, the danger is not as bad. This storm's not very big. And I'm looking at the radar right now, and I'm telling you folks, I believe it's deteriorating right before our eyes. Uh, I won't be surprised when they come out for the 10 o'clock update that this storm actually goes. Uh, slower on the winds or I'm talking 60 miles per hour pressure goes back up we'll see I don't know but all I'm trying to point out tonight and it's important that we point this out because there's a lot of people that are against us right now because the consensus says the consensus says this is why people say this rising global temperatures to cause insect crop losses food shortages that's from ABC News um, here we go. Rising global temperatures to cause insect crop losses, food shortages. This is some radio station. Climate change projected to boost insect activity and crop loss, researchers say. Science Daily, five days ago. Um, let's see. Another. Here we go. There's another one in here. Here we go. Climate change to make pests hungrier, cause more crop loss. Um, as temps rise, bugs will eat more of our food. Global warming spur uh, could spur more and hungrier crop eating bugs. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's like the AP or somebody in the AP says, here's one for everyone. Go ahead and put this in your headlines today. Here's another one. Same, same headline. They didn't even try to change it. Different paper. And this is why so many people will tell you that oh no no co2 is a, a greenhouse gas because of this because of this blatant ap story associated press story that some of these news channels here some of these websites 
and radio stations are regurgitating. Some are changing the title a little bit. Some aren't. Here, oh, here's one I missed. Uh, Futurity Research News Today. As temps rise, bugs will eat more of our food. Some are talking about drought causing uh, the, um, the crop loss. Um, here, Business Line gives it up to heavy rains. But when you go to Google News, which is where I am at right now, um, this is the consensus. This is where people are saying, this is why I say what I say. You go to the Google News and you click it. Does that mean that we're wrong because Google News doesn't post the truth or what's really happening? No. We already know and we pointed out how Google and other platforms are now correcting um, people's videos with these WikiLeak cards, Wikipedia cards, um, fact checking is what they're calling it. I guess what I'd like to start doing again on the Grand Solar Minimum channel is uh, reopening up our cooling paper section and start reading off um, more abstract or conclusions and then leaving the link in the description to go check it out. And I, I want to see the global warming Wikipedia card on one of those papers that are peer reviewed and verified about CO2, cloud nucleation, cooling, and especially the ones that talk about solar minimums and grand solar minimums. I, I want to see how that works. I want to see if Google tries to contradict a peer reviewed paper. I, I just want to see how that works out. Uh, of course, they're going to try to do it on opinion shows like this, where we're just reading articles and trying to report the news. But Guys, it's getting harder and harder. The last two weeks, I've really noticed a decrease in articles that relate to extreme weather. Um, the flooding stuff in India has been the most common uh, research find, but you know, not even that many stories today talking about Gordon. And if you watch the Weather Channel, which I do just by unfortunate default, um, but if you watch it, you would almost believe that these folks are rooting for a catastrophic storm to hit. They're rooting for floodwaters. I mean, they've got nine people on location right now for a strong tropical storm that could weaken here within the next hour. And yes, I'm not minimizing it. There's still going to be coastal flooding in certain areas. Mobile is going to be the worst of all the areas. But now I'm looking at the rain to come forecast and they've reduced the orange again. It's a speck on the map compared to what it was more of a bullseye for Mobile. So good news. They're not expecting five to eight inches of rain tonight, mainly because the storm will continue to weaken as it raises friction against the land. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover tonight i showed everybody yeah i showed that i showed that okay so wendy just other than wisconsin continuing to get battered with flood rains we're pretty quiet everywhere else these are not rain showers uh this has something to do with condensation and uh when the dew points are low actually here it's kind of humid so but these are not rain showers i can uh assure you that this is some kind of a radar anomaly that happens I forget exactly. I'm sure somebody in the chat knows or the comment section. So please uh, feel free to leave me the answer to why we were seeing those splotches here on the radar. But other than Gordon, now we got some uh, monsoonal rain from Texas, from that region anyway, and it kind of stretches all the way up to the Canadian border right now. Uh, that's a pretty big storm system, bringing some scattered thunderstorms to Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska, South Dakota. But other than that, we don't really have a lot of newsmakers tonight in the lower 48 other than Gordon, which is now battering the coast with heavy rains, but showing some signs that it will continue to weaken even more. And hopefully those rain totals stay low. You know, one to three inches is enough with up to five feet of storm surge, but not every area is going to get that kind of storm surge either. So it's going to be minor in some areas and, and better in some, but all right, so I'm going to check in with uh, Mari and see how things are going on with the folks in the chat. I'm sure they're pleasant as always, but I like to say hello and see how things have been. 
Welcome, Jake. I've been having a little bit of issues with the chat today, and I have to apologize. But um, everyone is doing very well in the chat. Uh, so happy Tuesday to you. Rob is in there. He's talking about his seastead. And uh, we got Miss Sea Gypsy in there. And there's just a bunch of people, you know, chatting about. Not a whole lot going on tonight. It feels like Monday, doesn't it? This morning it did. Rob, by the way, Rob, uh, I have not had a chance to look at my inbox today, so I apologize if you've sent me anything. been a busy day. Nevertheless, I will get to it and check out some of the things I know you sent me today. Um, but again, I want to thank our subscribers and everyone that shows support for this channel. Um, a lot of you guys, Starman, Rob, and Henrik, and Radical Gardener, and others in the community who contribute to this channel, uh, Penelope and our Facebook groups. Um, even just some of the regular people who just drop us uh, messages on Facebook. Um, it's good to hear from you. It's good to hear what's going on in your part of the world. And to those of you who I haven't responded yet that have re, you know, asked if there's anything you could do to help, honestly, um, just continue to be active in the comment sections and in the, in the chats and on our Facebook pages. Join up in our closed group and our open uh, group as well. And just try to share the most factual information you can about the situation. Uh, and I say factual because it's really easy to find a really sensationalized headline and jump to the gun and share it and think it means one thing and it means something else. I've done that even on this channel and have been corrected by people in the comment section. So, and I appreciate things like that. Um, the last thing I want to be known is for someone who overblows the situation or someone who is just using the term GSM just to help get more clicks and views on their videos. I take this seriously. Um, by any means, I'm not claiming to be a scientist. I wish I had that degree. I wish I had that hardware to back this up because it would probably make convincing people a lot more easier. But I'm telling you, if a person like myself and Mari and others who we've met along the way can connect the dots and see the big picture, I'm more than confident than the rest of the average Joes out there will be more than capable of seeing the information and learning as well. They just have to be willing to look at the information. That's what it really comes down to. So the ability to be open-minded enough and dare to look at the other side to see what we're talking about. But when you have AGW people making statements that they won't debate anybody who does not believe that humans are causing climate change and that we're in real danger and that if we don't do something now it's over so you're saying if you if you disagree with those three principles they don't want to talk to you about climate change well that's absolutely ridiculous insane kind of goes back to uh what i saw today from uh the supreme court justice hearings the confirmation hearings i caught the replay of it on c-span yes i'm that boring i watch c-span but i caught the replay and you got folks in the back. And look, I don't want to get into politics, but I just can't believe that people showing their ass in public on national television being hauled out by a cop is now being dredged up as you being a hero. Um, I've said this before. You're not going to convince me of something if you're yelling and screaming and cussing at me. I'll simply refuse with the evidence that you have. But if you talk to me like a normal human being, and treat me with respect and try to present it in a calm nature, then I might listen. Then I might take a look at it. But the behavior that I saw these grown people doing, people in their 30s and 40s and 50s, it's embarrassing. I used to see this stuff on Sky News, on other countries and their parliaments and their government people fighting and arguing and throwing staplers at each other and think, wow, what a joke of democracy or a country that is. And now it's happening here in the United States every day. And if it's not political, it's climate stuff or flat earth stuff. It's, it's just, it's crazy. All right, that's enough of my rant. Guys, thank you for tuning in tonight. Please remember to like and share. And remember, we will talk soon. Take care, guys.